You may be familiar with cancer causing chromium in drinking water. Chromium-6 was made infamous from contamination in California, a class action lawsuit, and later the Hollywood movie Aaron Brockovich. Now researchers at Washington University have found a new way to clean the dangerous chromium from drinking water. Can I just... Yeah, just... Surveillance chromium can be very harmful. So it kills people. Oh yeah. Chromium-6 is a toxic form of chromium that you'll find in water. It is a known carcinogen, and so we are concerned about its health effects. Dan Jamar is an environmental engineer at Washington University. His lab is taking up the cause to clean the cancer-causing chromium-6 from groundwater. Inside the School of Engineering and Applied Science, Jamar has an innovation that's making a splash. The movie Aaron Brockovich made a splash from the discovery of dangerous levels of chromium-6 to the class action lawsuit. The movie is based on the true story of the real Aaron Brockovich, who continues to fight for clean drinking water. The most high profile case was the one made famous by Aaron Brockovich, which was chromium contamination in groundwater in California. Uh, and that really brought chromium-6 to the public's attention. According to recent analysis from the Environmental Working Group, dangerous levels of chromium-6 contaminate tap water consumed by hundreds of millions of Americans. It can be found across the country. It's not going to be found in every water supply, uh, not by any means. It's primarily going to be associated with groundwater sources, and it's going to depend upon what the natural uh, geology is in those places. Right now, we don't actually have a national standard for chromium-6. We just have a standard for total chromium, which includes a, a form called chromium-3, which is actually a nutrient, and you'll find it in your multivitamin. As federal standards are under review, Jamar and his team of engineers are not wasting time finding a solution. The approach we've been using is something called electrocoagulation, where we add iron to the water, but we add it electrochemically instead of adding it by buying some chemical that contains iron and actually dumping in powder of that chemical into the water. Which is the way it's currently being done. Iron is used as a reactant to chemically convert the toxic chromium-6 to chromium-3, making it safer for human consumption. The advantages of the electrocoagulation approach is that there's no chemical feeding necessary. We actually work with plates, or in our case, rods of iron, and we apply an electric current between them, and that actually forces one of them to corrode, which actually releases the iron to the water. So it's a neat approach where you actually use electricity to control your dose of the water treatment chemical, as opposed to some chemical feeding operation where you're actually physically dumping in the chemicals to the water. They start by making their own contaminated groundwater that looks clear, but not yet cleaned. We have two iron rods right here coming into the water and we are applying a uh, direct current of electricity, the same thing that you would get from a battery to do that. Right now we're actually running it at just three volts, so that'd be like uh, two AA batteries hooked up. So it's not that much electricity. The iron of the iron rod is actually getting corroded, and it's being forced to corrode by the electric current that we're passing through it. And it's releasing iron in the plus two oxidation state, which is dissolved into the water. So the iron is coming into the water, you can see that we have uh, aeration through the system, so the bubbles coming up through there, that's just air that we supply to the system. And the aeration is beneficial here because it'll actually convert that iron, the dissolved iron, to iron in the plus three oxidation state, which will precipitate out as rust iron oxide or iron hydroxide. And so you're actually seeing a little bit of yellow to the system, which is going to be the dissolved iron. The dissolved iron that you're seeing is actually the real workhorse for chemically transforming the chromium from that toxic plus six state to the less toxic plus three state. And then forming the iron oxide particles is really beneficial because those will then contain the chromium. Most of it will be chromium three, uh, which is not toxic, but the chromium-3 will be bound up with rust-colored particles. And then all you have to do is remove the particles from the water. By removing them from the water, they are removing the chromium. It not only looks clean, but truly is clean. Some particles in there, we push it through the filter, and it comes out clear. Here are the samples. And then we add a uh, essentially a test agent that will turn purple if we have chromium-6. So this is where we started, time equals zero. That deep purple color tells us we have a lot of chromium initially in the water. 
They are adding chromium-6 at a level of 1,000 micrograms per liter. Through this process, engineers can drop the chromium level from 1,000 to below 10 micrograms per liter in less than 10 minutes. 10 micrograms per liter is California's standard taking effect in 2014. In this lab, the level can drop well below the California standard, below their ability to detect it. And if the rest of the country should follow California's lead, that's where Jamar comes in. If the California standard were taken nationwide, it might cost $9 billion. And so as you look at all of the water utilities that might need new technologies, you want to find the most cost-effective way to do that. Jamar says his approach using electricity would be ideal for smaller communities. He says it would cost them less money than having to pay for the traditional process of adding chemicals because you have to have deliveries of the chemical, you have to have storage of the chemical, you have to have chemical feeding operations, where if you're doing that at a large water uh, utility, that's no problem, where you're adding a lot of chemicals as part of the treatment process. Um, we think the electrocoagulation process could be better for small systems with a limited amount of labor on staff, um, the desire to have a water treatment technology which could be a little bit more plug and play, a little bit more automated. You uh, get your iron metal, in rods or plates once a year, once every two years, and then you just control the electricity and you're able to treat the water. If you're doing this with a powder, you're likely going to overdose the system. You're going to add more chemical than you need. It's harder to control the dose. Whereas here, we can dial in the voltage, get exactly the current that we want, deliver exactly the amount of iron that we want to optimize the process. This is an example on a small scale, but the technology can easily scale up. Two minutes five minutes, seven minutes, you can see it's really starting to go away. By the time we get to 10 minutes, it's clear. And if it's clear, that's an indication to us that there's no longer any chromium-6 in the water. For Innovations, I'm Kathleen Berger.